is going to get rid of it. And Virginia won. They deferred to the second half. Back deep, it is going to be over to the far side and picked up. And a good return across the 20, out to the 25. It is Nelson bringing it back. Got a Nelson with a solid return. So that's where the Bobcats start. And let's face it, last year, they ran it a little over 60% of the time. So that's what they want to do, play keep away. They absolutely want to run the football. They want to run the clock. They do not want to allow Virginia to have a whole lot of time offensively. So Nathan Rourke, young man from Toronto at 6'2", 210 pounds, has a single behind him. H back. Man, good hole over to the left side. Closes in a hurry. A gain of about three, call it four. For the running back, Olette, a senior from Covington, Ohio. Guy that was second team all back last year. And you see the surge by the offensive line early. That is a good sign for this Ohio ball club. The first guy to make contact is usually the guy that wins. They use the tight end in the backfield. Two on the wide side after the play fake. Here comes the heat. Good night. And it's loose. It's out. And it's recovered by Virginia. Cavaliers come up with a big play. Eli Handback, the defensive end, lands on the football. The junior from Ashland, Virginia. It is forced by the guy they talked about on the outside, Snowden. And you see the right tackle, he opens up his hips too early. You have to get three kick steps back and then turn and try and run the defender past the quarterback's level. You cannot open that outside shoulder because if you do, you give a short corner to the defensive end and he's able to get to the quarterback. So peace in on the play, the senior from Newport News. And all of a sudden, Willoughby points off a turnover right away as they review the play. I don't think there's any doubt about it. The previous play is under further review. Well, Forrest, pocket collapsed in a hurry. And that'll be key. Watch the right tackle. Actually, it's the tight end. He opened his shoulders on the outside. He had an outside linebacker coming on the outside rush. You've got to kick straight back. You've got to keep your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. At the third step, you're at the quarterback's level. That's when you can run the defender past the quarterback. And I think this is definitely a fumble. Rourke did not look like he was in a throwing motion. That was a good job by the Virginia. Virginia defender Charles Snowden to knock that ball out to push the tight end back into the quarterback and knock the ball out Boy, they had heat on both sides didn't they peace on one side Snowden on the other side hand back recovers it And that's what Virginia will do they'll have three down linemen in their three four defense and they'll walk up After both review, of their the ruling on the field is confirmed first down So to the second time these two schools have ever gotten together on the football field and it's rare when Virginia is in Nashville to begin with. They haven't faced Vandy in this ballpark since 75. Now they played here in 2005, so we'll get into it a little bit because it was a successful day for the Cavaliers. And in fact, their former quarterback, now one of their assistant coaches. So Bryce Perkins sets up with two in the backfield. And look out, huge hole for Ellis. Does he go the distance? Yes! Jordan Ellis, touchdown Virginia. Didn't take long, 18 yards on the score. Big hole for the senior from Sewanee, Georgia. And you see the difficulty in playing defense against an option offense. They've got a bunch of moving parts in their pre-snap. So you make the defense think. Well, they had problems scoring, especially in the first half last week in a driving rainstorm. In for the point after Mejia. Man, I guess you could say a perfect beginning. A takeaway, points on one snap, Ellis with the score, and the ACC on top of the Mac early. Here's a far cry from what we saw last week as Brian Delaney will kick it away. The sophomore from Chantilly, Virginia. Nelson will take it on the run at the five. He's got to lane over to the right side. Man, good field position again as he's belted, though, and driven back. <laughs> the energy of the Cavaliers early, and it was Zane Zandier who's starting a linebacker today. 
on special teams. This is a problem for us. Well, the offensive line and the tight ends have to do a better job of blocking up front. You've got to give work time. And when he gets north and south, Ellis is a load to bring down. He was able to get momentum going towards the end zone. No one basically touched him. And a lot of that had to do with all of the pre-snap movement that this Virginia offense brings to the table. Nathan Rourke, in at quarterback. He played three series, don't forget, last week. They were down 17-3. to three. It's Olette. A.J. Olette. He came to the program as a walk-on and starts play today because he is a great story for us. He starts play today, eighth all-time in rushing for the Bobcats program. Olette on the carry. That's great for a former walk-on. Burning on the tackle. Give it two. Got it one over a thousand yards last year. He got two on first down. See if there's a change. Trips on the wide side of the field for work. And he looks over the middle, wide open, throws it behind. He had Poppy White, the senior from Seminole, Oklahoma. Good cover, good recovery, but it was available early. Well, a great job by number 28, Brenton Nelson, to break on the football. Rourke had all the time that he needed. He delivered a strike down the field, but you see Nelson break on that football. He did not go through the receiver. He went towards the football. Often you see defensive backs go through the receivers trying to make the big play. A good job by Nelson. Young man that was the ACC's Rookie of the Year last season. Sophomore from Miami. And now third and long. Trip short side. Here comes the blitz. O'Rourke gets it. O'Rourke gets it away. And fortunate that nobody was in the neighborhood. So the pressure came on the blitz up the middle. It was Berger who got in there. Well, the Virginia t coaching staff told us they were very comfortable playing man on the outside. They were going to bring pressure. Every opportunity that they had against Rourke or whomever was playing quarterback for Ohio. Back deep for the Cavaliers, Tavares Kelly, the true freshman from Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas. And what a program that has been for college football and the NFL as well. Good punt. Backpedaling. Kelly at the 16. Man, great coverage downfield as he is slowed down and then wrapped up. Making the play on the specials. Dylan Connor. I want to remind you tonight, ABC with a top 15 matchup. Number four, Ohio State taking on number 15, TCU. It is in Jerry World, Arlington, Texas, the home of the Cowboys. Saturday night football all presented by Wells Fargo, and it all starts at 8 o'clock Eastern. You can take it with you, don't forget, live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. So we saw Florida State start to bring it up, get shocked. Not that they lost, but the manner they lost because they were hammered at Syracuse. Well, there's definitely some work to be done down in Tallahassee. Good 52 yard punt. Perkins out and open field breaking the tackle. Look out. Zacchaeus down the sideline gets the block inside the 30. The distance. Alameda Zacchaeus. Way too easy early for the Cavaliers. And a poor job by the Ohio defender on the outside. You've got to make this tackle. And a better job by Dubois on the outside, number eight, blocking all the way down the field. He stayed alive in the play to allow Zacchaeus to get to the end zone untouched. 86 yards on the score. Man, oh, man. Two snaps, two scores. Point after. It's Mejia. And what a start for Virginia. We are not two and a half minutes into the game, and it's already a 14-point lead for the Cavaliers. Trying to bounce back after the disappointment. Weather clear, track fast. And in part by Lexus, the experience amazing. Well, a neutral site in week three of the college football season as Zacchaeus just took it. Only 86 yards for a score. But we've seen it before and, and more often in the NFL. You remember the San Francisco earthquake back in 89, 2010. Vikings, Giants had to move a Monday night. 
in Detroit to the Metrodome. It's inflated roof when it collapsed. Now, bringing it back once again. It is going to be Julian Ross this time, making a miss. And he goes down across the 25. Decent field position, though, at the 26. And we take a look back at the touchdown. You see right here, Jalen Fox needs to be coming this way, and you want to force the receiver to cut back here so Pursuit can come over and make the tackle. When he missed the tackle on that play, he allowed for him to get down the sideline, and there's no one else there. And once again, great blocking by Dubois running down the sideline to give Zacchaeus the room that he needed to go untouched. So two snaps and two touchdowns. The 18-yard run by Ellis. Zacchaeus for the 86-yard touchdown throw and a bullet overshooting Poppy White and once again he was available now let's remember Frank Solik said after three series he could tell Rourke wasn't all and he made the change and I'm not blaming Rourke right now because he's been under intense pressure throughout this ball game he got hit on the first play of the game offensively for this ball club and he's been under pressure from this Virginia defense so he's a little riled up right now he needs to settle down a little bit take a little bit off the football because he's got some open receivers that was available and that was available for a big game across the middle he sends Olet in motion looks in that direction and indecision cost him gang tackling and then he ran into the brick wall as he goes down hand back Thank you. That's a brick wall as far as I'm concerned. Eli's had a really good start and our impact matchup. Well, offensive guard Joe Anderson is my type of player. Square 10 offensive lineman that loves to mix it up. Defenders constantly end up on their backs after confrontations with him. And Eli Handback, the former nose tackle, now defensive end, has done a good job of controlling the front and taking on double teams. It'll be interesting to see when he and Anderson match up. They bunch on the wide side, trips on the wide side, on a third and long. Option wide side. Nice cutback. Won't be enough, though. Lowering his shoulder was Olet, the senior from Covington, Ohio. But they're going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. And I tell you what, Joey Blunt. Better get down lower. You can't run up there tentatively because you saw what will happen. If you run up tentatively, Olet will lay the lumber on you. Good job by Olet getting as many yards as he possibly can. And that was a decent drive for Ohio. No turnovers. They were able to move the ball. Although they did not get a first down, that's something positive to talk about. Kelly waits for the punt. As Farkas gets into it, and he hit a 52-yarder. This is a beauty. Really turned it over. So back at about the five. Look out, Kelly making a miss. Kelly's got a half on the right side. The putter goes down, but he's cut from behind. What a return across the 45 and great field position once again for the Cavaliers. Thanks to Devaris Kelly. And that was a good job by the punter to force him back to the inside. He did not make the play, but he made the play occur. Watch the punter right here, number five, Farkas, right there, forcing him back to the inside where the pursuit is coming from. If he allows him to get to the outside, he may still be running down the sideline. 42-yard return after the 59-yard punt. So Virginia gets it for the third time and 11 of their own 47. This is where they try to deceive you. Ellis tripped up, scrambles his way across the midfield stripe, maybe three, about four. And for this Ohio defense, when you're facing this option-style offense, you've got to be part Einstein, part Hulk. Intelligent and patient enough to decipher where the ball is and then Hulk smash on the ball carrier when you get there. Okay, Einstein, Hulk, I like it. <laughs> Try to figure that out. Bring your protractor. It'll be second and about six. Jet? No. Fake on the jet. Run the option. And now Perkins in trouble. Or is he? Scrambles, break tackles. And he's pretty close to a first down at the 45. And you see the athletic ability of Perkins on that play. That should have been a loss of two or three yards. But he keeps his feet moving. 
Right now, Perkins is going to the side. He's looking for something down the field. He did a good job by not pitching that football. You see pressure. He's able to cut it back up the field. He's able to spin off two tacklers and lean forward and fall forward. And that's all you can ask for from your quarterback when you've got pressure like Ohio brought on that play. He needs two on third and a couple to the 45. Talented young man. And won't get it. Ohio comes up big that time. So Ellis the carrier, nothing doing that time. Man coming up from his free safety position, Javon Hagen. And he did a good job of deciphering where the ball is and getting a hat on the ball carrier. That's that Einstein part I'm talking about. And then you bring that Hulk smash to it. When you find where the ball carrier is, you put a hat on it. Back deep. It is Kylan Nelson waiting for the Coleman punt for the second team all ACC last year into the end zone and a break for the Bobcats. So down 14, they get a stop. After great field position for the Cavaliers at their own 47, and they failed to capitalize. Well, don't forget, you can stream college football all year long on ESPN+. Plus. You can start your free trial today. Just download the ESPN app or visit ESPNplus.com. It is a toasty one for us. How did you like playing on the turf in this weather? I absolutely would not. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bronco Mendenhall, Mendenhall, they needed a win last year late and they got it something we'll discuss because that was a signature moment for the cavaliers in just his second season start of his third one and one coming in today the carry it's malik irons first of the game the senior from british columbia but Bronco Mendenhall, we know how he can succeed at a high level we saw it for many many years at byu now a little rhythm, a little pace. They're going to get to the line in a hurry. That doesn't mean they snap it in a hurry, Forrest. They absolutely want to continue to run clock. Take your time. You're not in a rush. We're still in the first quarter. After the Irons run of four. Option wide side. And not much available. Good pinch from the outside. Big time play. Coming up, Jordan Mack middle linebacker the junior from Lithonia, Georgia and the Virginia defensive line is doing a good job of stretching out the play and allowing pursuit to get there you want to continue to force the back to be east and west as long as he's east and west pursuit can get there when he's able to plant that foot and get north and south that's when you get into trouble Mac fifth in the ACC last year and stops three years starter so now it's going to be third and four Big for the Bobcats. He can run it if he wanted to. Gets away and gets a block. And down the sideline, some room. Rourke, will he be able to go the distance? They've got an angle. Cuts it back inside the 10, down to the 5. Give him the 4. Touchdown saving tackle by Tim Harris, the cornerback. What a read and an ad lib by Rourke. And number 19, D.L. Knock makes the key block on this play. Watch him on the outside. He makes a block right here to spring him. Right there, that block right there springs Rourke down the sideline. And Rourke did a good job of cutting it back. Too often you see guys run out of bounds and avoid contact. I like the fact that Rourke's trying to get to the end zone. When you sell out like that, your offensive line gets into the ball game and they want to do a little bit more. We're a little more than halfway through the opening 15 minutes of play. Vanderbilt Stadium. Change of venue to say the least. And the Bobcats trying to get on the board with Irons, the single to the backfield. It'll be Irons. He's down inside the one. Second and goal from there. Well, we mentioned whether it's Perkins, Rourke, or Maxwell, all three quarterbacks, they have the ability to take off and don't mind running the football. And this is when you challenge your offensive line. You're basically in a four-point stance. You want to bear crawl. You want to get under the defender. You want to push them back. Let's see where the surge comes from, either the offensive line or the defensive line. Good size behind Rourke. 6'1", 230 irons. He's got it. He's in. Touchdown, Ohio. <laughs> 
So the most size they have at the backfield, and I'm talking about weight-wise, they used it. Malik Irons lugging it into the end zone. And look at the surge by the offensive lineman. You see defenders from Virginia going backwards. That's what you look for in red zone offense. Zervas in to kick it away. And just like that, a response by the Mid-American Conferences, Ohio Bobcats. It's a warm, it's a muggy one, and now it's starting to get sticky early around here. Virginia's for Roar, and that's when he was yanked, don't forget, after three, so a little relief for the quarterback because it worked for Nathan Rourke, the junior from Toronto. Joel Myers, Forrest Conley, the former Florida State Seminole. Irons goes in for the score, and after the kick, I want your thoughts on this new adjustment for these young men. Now do you kick away from Joe Reed. Joe Reed is that good on returns. The young man from Charlotte Courthouse, Virginia. And it's over his head. That's where you take out the return game completely. Well, we'll get your thoughts for us in a moment, but for an update, let's head back to the studio now. Check in with Chris Cobb. North Texas with the lead in Fayetteville. Not fair. Fate and then go. Come on. From the 25, first and 10 for the Cavaliers on their fourth offensive series. Look out. Goodbye. There goes Ellis. Down the middle he goes. Well, they catch him from behind. Unbelievable. Gotta be smart facing this offense. You cannot allow all the pre-snap movement to affect your assignment. Is it a, this is assignment football. Everybody reacts to all the pre-snap movement. Ellis goes basically untouched down the gut of this defense. You've got linebackers flying up in the gaps. You've got safeties paying attention to everything going east and west as opposed to what's coming downhill north and south. In for the point after, it is Mejia. Not many snaps for the Cavaliers, but they said this is 14th season as they had coached the Bobcats of Ohio. It was Jordan Ellis. His second touchdown of the day at an 18-yarder. That was 75 yards. And, and both defense are susceptible. In the only game so far this season for Frank Solich's squad, they gave up 439 yards passing and another 93 on the ground to a guy by the name of Newton, as in Kalen. Newton, Cam's younger brother, is the quarterback for Howard. And and Virginia's defense also gave up a ton of the ground last week. Well, for Virginia, they played in a rain soaked ball game. But for this Ohio ball club, this has to be, you know, dejecting because they've had two weeks to prepare for this offense. They even went back and looked at some of uh, BYU's old game film to see Coach Mendenhall's uh, habits and tendencies to try to prepare for this Ohio, excuse me, this Virginia ball club. And so far, it has not worked out well defensively. Once again, I just think they need to settle down. You've got to play assignment sound football when you face this type of offense. Well, let's see how it transpires. For Bronco Mendenhall's Virginia Cavaliers. They just had a 70-yard run against them from that young man, Nathan Rourke. So do things settle down because we have had a wild beginning. Nine minutes gone by, 28 points combined on the board. And from the 23 after the Royce return and a good play by Hogg, the wide receiver on specials. No gadgets there. It is Irons. And he shut down immediately after a game of a yard. And right now, Virginia is daring Ohio to throw the football. They've walked everyone up to the line of scrimmage. The safety, they play on one deep safety, but he's almost in the box. He's so close to the line of scrimmage. They are not worried about Rourke throwing the football. Ohio has to prove to Virginia that they can throw the football or they're going to continue to pack that box in and keep the run. It'll be second and long. Single on the outside, no safety on that side of the field. Man, Irons breaks through, an arm tackle. But again, good recovery. And that was back on the play, Jordan Mack, the linebacker. His dad, Charles, played at Georgia Tech. Coming up was Thornhill as well. Uh, they're efficient. Even if they don't have a ton of experience among their front seven. And they lost some starters in the front seven last uh, year at the end of the season. 
And for Ohio, if their backs can get to the second or third level, there's no one back there. There's one safety valve. So if they can get to the second or third level, they can get positive, positive yards. Third and short. Adjustments with irons in the backfield. Picking up the blitz and coming back. Looks like he has enough for the first down. Good grab by Poppy White to help out his quarterback. And a good job by White knowing where the sticks were, turning around, sitting down, giving his quarterback a big target. You see Rourke, he knows where he wants to go at the football. He does a good job of delivering a strike. And Poppy White did what you don't see a lot of young players doing on third and short. He found the sticks and turned around, got beyond the sticks to be able to get the first down. He was second team all Mac last year. Let Ohio catches and receiving yards. Gives him a first down to the 34. Time finally for Rourke, middle of the field. Man, he and Poppy White were not exactly on the same page, were they? And Rourke had time on that play. They went with two tights, a jumbo package. They had extra blocking to give Rourke the necessary time that he needed. But once again, when you've got a lot of pressure on you, you have pressure in your five and seven step drops, you tend to try and get rid of the football prematurely. And I think Rourke got rid of the football prematurely on that play. He had time. As you mentioned, the max protection set it up beautifully. It's going to be second and ten. Now are they committed to three throws? Tied in like an H back on the wide side. They don't throw their tight end very often. Irons trying to bounce. Maintains his balance. Did a good job just to get four or five out of it because of the initial penetration. Frank Solis is an amazing story. And, and for us to have the continuity they have there, not only is he 14 years, but so are both his coordinators. And that tells you they enjoy what they do and they enjoy where they're doing right. it. And that is great for recruiting because you can go and take kids home and say, hey, we're going to be here for the long haul. We want you to be a part of this great family tradition that we have at Ohio University. Third and five from the 39 of the Bobcats. A bunch with trips on the wide side looking in that direction. And what a grab. He made it. He's short, but that's an amazing catch by D.L. Knock. Man, oh, man. And one, <laughs> Thornhill was all over Knock on that play. Thornhill, the safety, did a good job of not interfering, but a better job by not making this catch. You see him reach out with one hand, grab it, bring it close to his body, and he's able to maintain possession of the ball as he's going down towards the ground. It'll be a punt. They're short of the first down by a couple of yards. Farkas in to punt it away. Once again to Tavares Kelly. Farkas has hit some big ones already. 42 yard return the last time. And Kelly is buried. There'll be a flag hit early. And Ohio, it was Julian Ross who hit him early. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what I call the people's elbow. You just can't do that. You can hurt someone on a play like that, but that is definitely the people's elbow, and the fact that he got up and he's okay, I'm sure the coaching staff is very happy about that. I'm, and Coach Solis is going to have some words for Ross because you had them pinned deep in their own territory. Now, you add 15 yards onto that, you give them good field position. I think we're all surprised you didn't call for a fair catch. <laughs> Kelly has got some serious guts. So a little more than two minutes to play, and instead of putting it in play back around their own 16. It's going to come out now past the 31 close to the 32. You're already down by 14. That's tough. So another first down at decent field position for the Cavaliers. And this is going to be their fifth offensive series of the game. Is it going to be targeting? Are they going to look at it for a possible ejection? Is that what they're determining right now? Well, the first thing you're looking at is a defenseless player. Right. Second of all, did he launch himself? Third of all, did he use the crown of his helmet? 
I think he used uh, his shoulder. He did not launch himself. He just ran into the offensive player, and he did not use the crown of his helmet. So I don't see. No, outside of him. Yeah, he did a good job. That is what you want to do. That is how you teach football. Use lead with your shoulder pad. Don't lead with the crown of your helmet. And he didn't launch himself. Actually, if he's not early for us, would you call it textbook? Absolute textbook if he's not early. If he waited a millisecond later, it would have been textbook. But I think it's a good teaching mechanism for uh, players, for defensive players, to understand the importance of not launching yourself, not leading with the crown of your helmet, and not hitting above the shoulders. That's something else that they look for. Were you ever in this situation, adjustments when you were at Florida State, where you were supposed to play one week somewhere, but all of a sudden it was moved? No, I was never in that situation, but as a football player, you're supposed to be a tough guy and understand you just got to be prepared for whatever After happens. After reviewing the play, the ruling of the field is confirmed. There is no foul for targeting. Just kick, catch, interference, 15 yards, first down. So it's almost like when you're the second or third team or you know you're an ankle sprain away from getting in there. So you prepare all week long for whatever comes about. Now, I've been in games where we've had weather delays, which have changed the scope of a ball game, but never in a situation like this. From the 32, can the Bobcats get a stop? Last time the Cavaliers had it, Ellis went 75 yards. Not that time. Ellis is buried after a gain of a yard as we head back to the studio. The score, 14-10, Tigers, the Auburn variety, Gary. And that's after LSU took it the first five minutes of the game. Long drive and a touchdown. So Auburn over LSU. A lot of time left in that one. Perkins on the quick out. It's complete. Man, short of the first down, but manageable now as he went to Joe Reed. Last year, a guy who had 23 catches, uh, but a guy that led the ACC in a dangerous, dangerous one on specials and returns. And one of the difficulties in playing a, a, an offense like Virginia is they'll go 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end, three wide receivers, then shift the tight end to the backfield and go 20 personnel, and run out of that personnel so you, you don't know what they're going to do you have to continue to be assignment sound run the wide receiver in motion and it's complete what a bullet it goes for a first down on the reception to evan butts the senior tight end from newton square pennsylvania 32 catches for the tight end last year and if you give perkins the time to sit back and find the receiver he will eat you up all afternoon right now he has no pressure and i think that's because they've been able to run the ball so effectively you've got this ohio defense on their heels trying to make sure they don't have any missed assignments they do use the tight ends ohio not so much as perkins ad libs in the backfield by some time and what a throw it's complete zacchaeus has it out of bounds and he's got another first down at the 38 but boy that's a quarterback that can get away and you see how elusive is it? he is he sees the pressure coming from the outside he's able to turn get away from the pressure set his feet and deliver a strike down the field and allows the chaos to get the ball and get outside Drive started back at the 32, sixth play coming up at a first down. And that is going to be the final snap of a really strong start after a disappointing week. Now the Cavaliers bouncing back with 21 on the board in the first quarter. I think they want to play a bandy more often. 15 on ESPN. Welcome back once again into our neutral site game on this third week of the college football season. Joel Myers along with Forrest Connolly, former Seminole of Florida State, who's hurting a little bit right now. We're trying to make him forget it, so I won't bring it up again. <laughs> hey, it happened. You can't, you can't worry about the past. You can only worry about what you can control, which is the future. How about that first quarter, though? 22 yards every play on average for Virginia. You couldn't have asked for anything better if you're the Virginia offensive coaching staff. Let's see if it continues. Zacchaeus stays in the backfield. On first and 10 for the 38. 
Or check that it was Nelson to the backfield. Plenty of time for Perkins. Middle of the field. Off the fingertips of Devontae Cross. Sophomore wideout. And pretty close. That wasn't a bad throw by Perkins. And a good job by the safety to come over and just get a hand up. That's all you want to do is you want to try and get something in front of the receiver to mess with his concentration. Cross had an eye on the football, but I think that late hand coming across messed with his concentration. It'll be second and ten. Almost unbalanced on the left side. It's Nelson up the middle. Good yardage again. As he gets seven on second and ten. So third and short. But every time Ellis touches the ball, he goes for good yardage. After the opener, he was the ACC's running back of the week and their easy win over Richmond. Well, the Virginia coaching staff talked to us about Ellison. They said he is best suited going north and south. They do not want to see him going east and west because he is not as effective. Let's see if he gets the call once again on third and three. Blitz up the middle. Nelson gets it. Or make that Ellis gets it, excuse me. He's got it inside the 27 down to the 26. Just went low, didn't he? And right now you're seeing the surge from the Virginia offensive line. You see white shirts going backwards. A good job by the offensive line to get lower than the defensive lineman and get that surge going. You've got to have a flat back in short yardage situations. If you stand up tall, you allow the defensive lineman to get up under you and get their hands on the inside. Right side is experience on the offensive line, second year. Starting center as well, Rinkensmeyer. Man, little delay action. Not as much for Ellis that time, but it still worked for about three, almost four yards. As we head back to the studio with Chris Connor. Chris? BYU in Wisconsin at the half on ABC. Good game. Thought it'd be a good game going in, too. Absolutely. BYU. Wisconsin both those ball clubs want to run the ball and you see what happens. That's old school football Joel That's not none of the stuff that we see now with the spread offense. That's old school football going on right now up in Madison You hate that don't you? I love it. I know square team. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I call square team football It was a five-yard mark off so first down all over again for the Cavaliers. They're up by 14 early here in the second quarter Corner of the end zone and Not there Pretty close, though. The intended target, Aziz Dubois, the junior from Irvington, New Jersey, had to wait a minute because it looked like it was going up at the shoulder of the D-back. Well, Perkins eyeballed his receiver the whole time. He knew where he wanted to go. And Jamal Hudson did a good job of not getting his hands on the receiver. He turned around late, but he did turn his head and tried to locate the football. They're looking at second and five from the 21. Movement up front, free snap, offside. And the other side of the field. And they say it wasn't catchable because there was plenty of contact. Kelly was the intended target. Now a flag, but it's offside. And another free five. So right now, Ohio. Offside, defense number 97. Five-yard penalty. That foul results in a first down. That's the tackle burger, but Ohio not helping themselves. Well, right now, this is how defense has had some issues with discipline. I think discipline and assignments, and now discipline with staying on sides and not jumping off and giving Virginia a free first down. So they move it down to the 16. Ellis has 110 yards on only seven carries. He gets it, he gets it late. Scrambles his way inside the 15, maybe two, down to the 14, and that is it. One of the few times they've been able to slow it down. Jordan Ellis. One of the things Perkins has done, he's continued to hand the ball off to the dive back. I'm looking for him now to pull the ball out the belly of the dive back and either hit the pitch or come back around because Ohio is selling out in the middle of that defense because they've been beaten so badly in the first quarter with those dive plays. Joe Reed sets up in the backfield along with Chris Sharp Reed's motion 
And underneath Zacchaeus, close to a first down. Close to a first and goal. Let's see where they spot it. He need to take it. He needed to take it inside the six. And it looks like first and goal. And Perkins, once again, finds his receiver in the middle of that zone and puts the ball where he can get it and turn up the field and get positive yards. Zacchaeus did a good job of locating the sticks, making sure he was at the sticks to be able to get the first down. Mixing things up now, even in, in a short field situation. So it is first and goal. He's got Ellis in the flat. Throws the lateral. He's in for the touchdown. Sharp was out in front. It's kind of set up as an H-back over to that side. And Sharp did a good job of just getting in the way of the defender. Often you see guys want to try and get a knockout block, but Sharp just got his body, and watch right here, he got his body right in front of the defender. Just enough of Jamal Hudson to allow Ellis to get to the end zone. Six-yard touchdown pass. Second TD toss of the game with Mejia in for the point after. So it was free to get in. But it is in the mid-90s today in downtown Nashville. What a start for Bryce Perkins and the Cavaliers of Virginia. On ESPN, and in just a moment, we're going to be talking to the athletic director of the Cavaliers of Virginia. Ten snaps produced 21 points for the Cavaliers to start the game. That drive, got to talk to those guys down there. 11 snaps, 62 yards, and we are joined by the athletic director, Carla Williams. With this kind of start, I can't believe you don't schedule more games in this ballpark. <laughs> No, we'll, we'll take the start, but we'd rather be in Charlottesville. But we will definitely take the start here. Yeah, we were all looking forward to it. And our thoughts and prayers with everybody back close to the coast. And I know you feel the same way because in a hotel, we were just with some people from Jacksonville, North Carolina, and it got slammed pretty well. Yeah, well, when the, the uh, governor declared a state of emergency for Virginia, there were uh, over a quarter of a million people that evacuated the coast, and they came inland, and a lot of them were in the hotels uh, in Charlottesville. So for sure, our thoughts and prayers go out with uh, out to the victims that were impacted by the storm or being Im impacted by the storm right now, not just in Virginia, but for sure in North Carolina and South Carolina. Have you gotten a report on Charlottesville, any damage to the campus or anything going on there as far as the weather? No, actually, Charlottesville is, is going to be fine for now. Our issue will be flooding uh, the next few days as the rain as Florence moves up the coast um, and so hopefully it, it's fine there we probably could have played the game uh, in Charlottesville but uh, we knew that uh, there would be a lot of damage uh, on the coast and in the region and we didn't want to distract from uh, first responders um, for our football game so Vanderbilt has been uh, very very gracious and is working out for us right now and hopefully it'll continue throughout the game now, when will you travel back to Charlottesville? Will you leave this afternoon or this evening? Yes, we'll leave after the game. Second and 10, Carla Williams with us, the athletic director for the Cavaliers. Nothing doing. Man, the ball's out, look out, picked up, going the other way, and now Handback puts it on the ground. Eli Handback had it, who gets it, scrambled to the goal line. Is it going to go back to the Bobcats? Looks that way. And D-Light Handback just showed you why he's a defensive lineman and not a ball carrier. <laughs> it was but, possessed, though, so it's going to be a first down. Let me ask you this, Carla. Your relationship with this university goes back. You worked here as well, so tell us how this all worked out. So I was here from 2000 to 2004, uh, and not, not just me, but also our deputy athletics director, James Blues. He was here uh, as well. And, you know, David Williams, the current athletic director here, uh, and Candace Lee, the deputy athletics director, were both here when we worked at Vanderbilt. And so it was, uh, you know, I just picked up the phone and called David, and he was eager to help. And I knew Vanderbilt would be, and they have been outstanding I mean this is their staff that's running this game for us and um, it's a, the epitome of collegiality when you think about David Williams and Candace Lee and, and Vanderbilt University such a beautiful I mean you were spoiled you were here it's such a beautiful campus it is it's, it's gorgeous and Nashville is awesome too I mean it's a great city great great uh, a lot of great restaurants here we as know. well <laughs> we love coming here 
Yeah, but as I said, you know, you've got to schedule it more often. This is the first game that you guys have played in this ballpark since 1975. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you, you would think that maybe these two schools would play each other on a more regular basis, um, and that may be something that we look forward to in the future. Yeah, because of your relationship, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about. Yeah, well, and two great academic institutions, you know, SEC, ACC, might be an intriguing matchup as well. This play is under review. They're trying to figure things out right now, but we are on the campus of Vanderbilt University, the old ballpark. The stadium opened in 1931, and, and I've done both football and basketball here, and the basketball gym is a, the, the benches below the floor, I mean, it is classic. You can't yeah. duplicate this. Yeah, no, the, it is It is definitely a home court advantage over Memorial Gymnasium uh, with, the, with the benches at the end lines. Uh, if you're an opposing team, this is uh, not a place you want to play. Yeah, but fortunately, you went to one of the great institutions, and I've also been there, and, and we're all, we wanted to be there in Charlottesville. So we're thinking of everybody back there but at the same time the history that your campus holds that's why we were all looking forward to it yeah and hopefully we'll have you guys back there um, but I, I, I love it uh, Charlottesville is wonderful the University of Virginia has been great I've been there nine months uh, my husband is a faculty member on staff our son is in school and we just love it I mean the community has been so welcoming and uh, we're looking forward to spending a long time in Charlottesville well you couldn't have picked a better neutral side venue as far as we're concerned i agree right. congratulations <laughs> thank you so much yeah it was seamless yeah and we appreciate you guys being here to cover the game too our, thank our you honor. thank Absolutely. you thanks carla right. thanks, thanks for popping up appreciate it the athletic After director the, play, the ruling on the field stands the ball was recovered by ohio at the one yard line first and ten at the one ohio so the Bobcats get it, and because there was a change of possession, you think Eli Handback is going to get some grief from his teammates? Absolutely. Well, the big fella was <laughs> rumbling down the field, and he saw the end zone, and he got a little bit excited. And the, the offensive players for Ohio did the right thing. When you're chasing a, a guy that's not used to carrying the ball high and tight, you rip it the football. So they did a good job of knocking it out of his hands. But it reminds you kind of of Leon Lett. You know, years ago, <laughs> running towards the end zone, and he got it, but he kind of held the ball out a little bit. But the big fella got excited. He saw the end zone. He saw a touchdown. Uh, but a great play by this Virginia defense to stunt the running game of the Ohio Ball Club. Now, 99 yards away, down by 21 points, and going for the bundle on the sideline. What a grab! Dropped it in beautifully. Poppy White's there. How about the throw by Rourke? And Rourke saw man coverage on the outside, and Tim Harris, number five, never turned around to locate the football. Poppy White running down the field. Harris has to turn around to try and locate the football. He goes for 36 yards. Exhale. You are allowed to exhale now if you're a Bobcat. So let's see if they can produce a long drive. Oh, let stays in the backfield as a single. You brought it up. Max protection with two tight ends. And Olet doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And if I'm Ohio, I'm trying to locate Eli Handback right now, number 58, and run at him. He just ran about 45, 50 yards uh, for what he thought was going to be a touchdown. So he may be gassed. Now he's a big fella at 6'4", 300 pounds. And big guys, we're not used to running like that. We, we're short 5, 10-yard bursts, and we're holding our hands and our hips trying to regroup. So. He ran a, a long way down the field, so I'm going to go at him and see if he's gassed right now. You think he feels like he's in Boulder, Colorado playing today? <laughs> Maybe. Second and 11 from the 36. Back over to the sideline. Jordan made some plays already today. They pick up the blitz. Now problems. Good job by Rourke, but the guy that went down didn't quit on the play. Zane Zandier, the sophomore from Pittsburgh, who got the start today. Boy, that's tenacious play. And Olet, number 45, did his job. He picked up the blitz. But Rourke has to realize when the blitz is coming, somebody's going to be open. You need to get rid of the football. You cannot hold on to the ball and dance in the backfield. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to have a hot read and get rid of the football. And usually the hot read or the hot receiver is right in the area where the blitz came from. Second tack of the game for the Cavaliers. So now three on the wide side of the field. And did we get a timeout called? The previous play is under further review. 
So a review on a hot day, sunny day in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and what shouldn't be overlooked is they're playing on turf. So you've got maybe a 10 or 15 degree temperature difference down on that turf. It holds the heat well, doesn't it? So is there targeting on this play at the end? You be the judge. Ooh. No, I don't think it's targeting. I think handback is just making a play. Right. And the quarterback happened to be falling backwards. He didn't lead with the crown of his helmet. It's yeah. kind of a face mask, face to face mask hit. It's not like he launched. He's trying to make a tackle. And the quarterback is falling back. So it's not like he led with the crown of his helmet. He didn't launch himself. And he didn't look to hit him above his shoulders. End of the play. But how about Zandir's motor? The sophomore from Pittsburgh at 6'3", 235. He, he eludes him originally, but Zandir won't quit. Well, Olette stepped in, up in there and did what you want guys to do on blitz pickup. After reviewing the play, there's no foul for targeting. The ruling on the field stands. Third down. And you brought up the turf. The good thing about this is you're not coming into a neutral site and you're not tearing up somebody's field because it is artificial. Vanderbilt, by the way, they were down early by a couple of touchdowns at their Notre Dame today. I don't think you've got the same heat there in South Bend. So in a 28-7 game, clock moves inside of nine minutes left in the half. And it is going to be third and long. Tackle's got to take care of Snowden. He does. Middle of the field. Grab is made. Close to the first down. But not enough. That's Ball who took it in. And a good job right here, sitting down in the middle of this defense, making himself a big target, and then turning around and getting up the field, putting his team in a position to go for it on fourth down, which I think is a smart move at this point. Getting up to the line in a hurry before the defense can get set. Need two after the junior wide receiver Elijah Ball made the catch. Ohio. And Ohio's going to stop it. So head. let's see if they do go for it when we come back or maybe set up just to see if they can get Virginia on sides. The last time Cavaliers played in this city, Music City Bowl 2005. Quarterback Marcus Higgins came through in the clutch in that game against Minnesota. UVA fans know that very well. And also Marcus Higgins, who's still a big part of the Cavaliers program. It'll be fourth and about two. And they are going to go for it. Wide side pitch. Yes. Now, can he make it? No. Cut off and chopped down, trying to turn the corner. And what a play on the outside. In particular, that was Brent Nelson who came up, and also Joey Blunt, the free safety. Well, they went with the pistol formation, and D.L. Knock has to get that block on the outside. Number 19, Knock, if he's able to get that block, he allows for the back Olette to get around the edge and either get to the sideline and try and dive for the first down or plant that foot and get north and south. So they fail on fourth and two, lose yardage. And it goes back to Virginia up by 21. They'll get it now at the Ohio 44. Second time they started in Ohio territory. First one was after turnover, their first points of the game. Perkins in trouble and going down. First sack of the game for the Bobcats. As they get Perkins way back there for a big loss. And a good job to pressure the offensive line for Virginia. You see, they're coming from the outside. He has nowhere to go in the pocket. The guards and the center have to do a better job of being stout at the point of attack. You've got to get a punch. You can't catch because you're allowing the defender to get your body and get a rip and a tug. You've got to be stout at the point of attack to allow the quarterback to step up in the pocket. It's a loss of seven. Second and 17. A little dart for the tight end. It's complete as Butts takes it in. Well short of where he needed to go and there's there's the quarter our wide receivers coach Marcus Higgins Led the Cavaliers to the 34 31 win over Minnesota pass for career best in that bowl game 
358 yards, Bowles MVP, and still a big part of the stack. And that, of course, different ballpark. That was the Nissan Stadium with the Tennessee Titans play. So third and about 10. Coming back on it, good grab, first down. Taken in on the far side by Zacchaeus. A lot of touches for Ellis and Zacchaeus, and no surprise there. And number four, Jamal Hudson for Ohio gave him too much room. You knew they were going to try and run the comeback route. What he did is he pressed the defensive back, made him backpedal and turn and start running. Once he got to the sticks, he turned around and came back to the football. The reception, fourth for Zacchaeus, 121 yards. Reed was in motion. Now they're going to find Joe Reed. Has not been targeted that much in this game and scrambles for maybe a yard or two at the most. So good recovery by the Bobcats defense. And for this Ohio defense, you want to keep everything in front of you right now. You can't allow the offensive player to get behind you. Will Evans hustling over to the side by the sophomore from Augusta, Georgia. Take your sticks if you go to Augusta. And now the Jet. Look out. Movement on the outside, and look at the guy go. It's Tavares Kelly, the true freshman from Fort Lauderdale. And what a high school program he's out of with a flag down on the play. St. Thomas Aquinas, more current NFL players out of that high school 15 right now than any other. And let's see if you can locate the hold on the outside. Here the, the run, tackle. holding by the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Good reason. And a good job by some more on the outside to press, 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 and not allow that tackle to get a hook block on him to give a corner. So that wipes out the good run by Kelly. The speed at 5'8", 160. Young man can fly. And I mentioned uh, all the alums. Michael Irvin played there. The late Brian Piccolo. Must have had a decent tennis team in St. Thomas Aquinas as well. Chris Everett, just a Grand Slam champion. It'll be second and long. On the out, Zacchaeus gets the penalty yardage back. But it's still going to be third and long. Now it'll be interesting to see if Ohio comes up and plays press man or if they play soft coverage. It's interesting also that all of these carries last week, they had 39, and granted it was a rainstorm, you couldn't throw it that well, but 25 of the 39 carries belonged to the quarterback. And there is better balance, more touches for the other guys so far today for us. So Bryce Perkins getting a lot of guys involved, but needs about 11 on this one. And in trouble. What an elusive play by Perkins. Complete to Dubois for the first down, but the escapability of Perkins created that opportunity. And what I don't like about this play is the defensive backs played 10 yards off the receiver. It was third and 10. So when the defensive back starts to backpedal at the snap of the football, you're already giving them the first down. You need to come up. You don't have to play press man, but I think you need to be a little bit closer to the wide receivers and put pressure on the quarterback to make a tight throw. A lot of cushion, as you mentioned, on the outside. Perkins across the middle, and pinball knocked around was Jana, Terrell Jana, sophomore from Vancouver. Boy, it took a shot and then vulnerable after they spun him around, but he held on, did a good job for a gain of eight. And I've been really impressed with Bryce Perkins' ability to move around in the pocket when pressure's got to him. He's got really good active feet. And he stays active in that pocket to look down the field when he's moving around and try and get the ball to his playmakers. He's 12 of 14 with that completion now. 174 yards with the score. Set up the tight end butts on the right side, the wide side. Man, a little fade into the end zone. Touchdown. It's Dubois. Inside of three to play. And Virginia doing just about anything they want right now. And that's 6 3 versus 6 feet. And he put the ball up where Dubois could high point the football. 
They're catching Hudson. He's not turning around until late to try and locate the football. And by the time he turns around, Dubois has the ball, and he's squeezing the football and maintaining control as he hits the ground. A.J. Mejia in for the point after. Gets it easily. So the domination continues for the Cavaliers inside of three to play. And they're up now by 28. Once again, as ESPN's college football continues, all presented by Exxon Mobil. Imagine the Bobcats of Ohio University taking on the Cavaliers of Virginia. Joel Myers along with former Florida State Seminole, Forrest Conley. And we're not bringing up the matchup earlier in the day on ESPN. That's <laughs> over. To rub that it's in over. <laughs> it's like a golfer. You got to put it in your next great swing. Coach Tagging and the staff, they're going to regroup. They're going to get those guys together. They're going to regroup. Right now, it's just, it's been a, a little ugly early in the season, but they'll regroup. A little ugly. <laughs> <laughs> over to the far side. <laughs> Ross will stay back there. So we'll see if Ohio can do something over the final 252. Trailing by 28. Chris Cotter in studio. Jim Moore and Emmanuel Acha will join me for the halftime report in just a little bit. Auburn LSU going at it in the loveliest village. Plus a couple of teams, Notre Dame and Wisconsin on upset alert. Highlights of all those games plus a whole lot more coming up at the half. Joel, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. And we'll see you at Tumor's Corner. That's always a classic weekend. Whether it's in Baton Rouge, love that. But Tumor's Corner on the Auburn campus campus top 10 all brought to you by Allstate and what a game between you got to remember Auburn 7 LSU is number 12 now what a game Vandy right now is giving Notre Dame late in the fourth quarter in South Bend Rourke on first down ad living not much available on the outside so the completion short yardage and Forest Alabama Ole Miss game we'll be watching tonight 7 o'clock Eastern it's going to be interesting at Ole Miss they've given Alabama some close ones interesting ball game I love the quarterback for Ole Miss's ability to move outside of the pocket and get the ball down the field he leads the country I think right now in passing yards so Alabama's defensive backfield has been a big question they'll be tested tonight and don't forget that game at 7 o'clock Eastern on ABC as Bryce Hall came, almost came up with a pick. And Rourke has to do a better job of looking off the defender. Hall was waiting right there for the football. I think he got a little bit excited because he saw the end zone in front of him. But Rourke needs to do a better job of looking off the defender and throwing a back shoulder throw when the defensive back is that close to your receiver. You can't throw it where the defender can make a play on it when you throw it to the outside. 2-11 left in the half. Don't want to give it back to Virginia with too much time left on their clock and they convert a third down blitz is coming man a low throw and behind Poppy White nothing doing three and out once again for the Bobcats and you know it was interesting when we talked to the defensive coordinator Nick Howell for Virginia one of the questions I asked him was was he comfortable playing man on the outside and loading the box to stop the rushing attack of this Ohio ball club. And he immediately answered that question. Yes, of course, we are definitely comfortable playing man. And you see the results when you've got more than they can block. You don't give work enough time to do anything with the football down the field. Kelly, after he got torpedoed earlier in the game on a personal foul, wisely calls for the fair catch. Just mentioned Nick Saban and number one Alabama. Game we're going to be watching together for us. That's taking on Ole Miss in Oxford tonight. That is on ESPN Saturday Night College Football. ESPN College Football Primetime, all presented by Hampton by Hilt, 7 o'clock Eastern, and also live on the ESPN app, so you can watch that as well on the go. So do you run out the clock? Three timeouts still available there for Virginia as they get her to their own 34. Guess they're not running out the clock. Complete for a gain of about six or seven. And it goes to Butts with a tie it in as we head into the studio once again. Chris, what's the latest? 
PlayStation View, multi-view with these three live games going on right now. Our game with this uh, Virginia firmly in control. Oklahoma State doing all right over on ESPN. Meanwhile, Wisconsin in an absolute fight for their lives on ABC, trailing by seven to BYU. All right, Chris, and finally a big play by the Bobcats defense for us. Eric Pop creates the opportunity. And Perkins got caught right now. He has to feel pressure coming from the backside. You got to squeeze that football. The running back has to do a better job of blocking for his quarterback. Ellis, you've got to stick your head in there. You've got to sacrifice your body. Get in front of those defenders. You cannot just try and reach because when you reach, a speed rusher is going to get around you. Man, it looked like Chukwu got around for the defensive end. So all of a sudden now, Ohio gets it back. First time they've had it to start a drive in Virginia territory. Yeah, the Cavaliers 29. And they make some noise. Long count by Rourke. Good pocket protection and over his shoots him. No, he doesn't. He's got him. Touchdown, Ohio, and Poppy White. And that was a great play by Rourke because he looked off the defensive players. He went through his progressions. He found what he wanted coming down the field. His top receiver, White. White's able to get in between those defenders. Rourke did a great job of laying the ball right in where White can make a play on it. So that's points off a takeaway. And that was a gamble, let's face it. The way they kind of, I hate to use the word Cavalier, but maybe that's the way they were with a big lead at 35-7. to seven. In for the point after, it's Ervos. And that's big. Now all of a sudden the Bobcats go into the locker room. Well, we're down three scores. <laughs> well, Rourke did a great job on that play because he did what you don't see a lot of young quarterbacks doing, although he's a junior. He looked off the defense, watching. He looks to the right. He doesn't see what he likes. He goes through his progressions. He surveys the field. Then he sees his top receiver, and he lays it right in between the defenders where only White can make a play on the football. And that's double coverage. Safety was over there as well. So a really good job by Nathan Rourke, the junior from Toronto, his second team all back last year. And now if you're Virginia, do you go ahead and run the clock out? <laughs> or do you once again attempt to try and put more points on the board? We've seen big plays because that is the fourth scoring play on the first snap of a series. Well, I think something that they've gotten away from is running the football down the gut of this defense. They've been successful passing the ball with Perkins on the last couple of series. And they've gotten away from running down the gut, which is something that they were successful with in the first quarter. Joe Reed is back inside the 10. It'll be kicked away by Michael Farkas. And trying to get it. Do they get it? Onside. It was off a Cavalier up front. Yes. Do you believe it? And it's pop on the recovery. I love it. <laughs> this is. Don't <laughs> underestimate Solich, huh? And this is why you play the games. He kicked it directly into. The offensive player, he never saw the ball coming. It's, I think the ball bounced off of his face mask. It came at him so fast and popped Johnny on the spot to get the recovery. Kick, hit the receivers, then recovered by the kicking team. First out. So the onside pays off. That has to be one of the greatest onside kicks I've ever seen. And by design. And, and it, it worked out perfect. So creative opportunity now. For Frank Solich, and remember the whole story behind Frank Solich, and what a success he was at Nebraska in six seasons. Don't forget his teams there were 58-19. They are so fortunate to have him in Athens, Ohio, in 14 years now, and he was let go in 2003, only after he went nine and three. First down from the 46. Good pocket protection, bullet, and he threw it to the back side to Poppy White for the completion. Well-positioned throw. And surprisingly, Virginia only brought four pass rushers, which allowed Ohio to give Rourke the time that he needed to throw a strike down the field. 
move the chain, stop the clock momentarily. We approach a minute left in the first half. And a timeout for the Bobcats. Timeout. Ohio, second charge of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Well, all of a sudden, if you get a score here, Forrest, you've completely changed the momentum of this contest going into the locker room. Well, Ellis missed the block on that play, which allowed for the strip recovery, and then Rourke hits his big play receiver down the field, Poppy White, and then here you go with the surprise onside kick and recovery by this Ohio ball club. They're trying to put themselves back in this ball game. They have had a week off to prepare for this. They did not want two weeks off. They didn't want this game canceled. And what was interesting is on that uh, defensive series, before they called a timeout, Virginia walked up their outside linebackers and they showed blitz. They were playing press man on the receivers. So I think that's why Coach Solich and his staff called a timeout to make sure they get the right play. Now, I don't know if they'll come back with that defensive lineman again, but they're playing up on those receivers and they've walked those outside linebackers up. So I expect the blitz on this play. Malik Irons in the backfield with Roar. Picked it up. From the outside, he's got single coverage going into the end zone. She got it, yes! Touchdown, Ohio! Isaiah Cox on the receiving end. Unbelievable. And interesting enough, Virginia walked up those outside linebackers, but they only brought one. They kept one back in the middle of the defense a little bit, number 11, Snowden. Backed off, and what did Rourke do? He waited, he allowed his receiver to clear, and Cox makes a great catch, high point in the football, and making sure he squeezes it as he comes down to the ground. Zervos for the point after. 14 points over a little, say about 90 seconds. The last 90 seconds have changed this game dramatically. And Rourke is doing a good job of finding the matchups and taking advantage of it and putting the football where his receivers can make plays for him. That's all you can ask from your quarterback. Find playmakers and give them opportunities to make plays for you. So last week, the Cavaliers played catch up the entire game. Now they dictate the tempo, but they give up two, two long passes to close out the half. So let's see. I don't think that we're going to see another gadget, another onside kick. What really, I brought it up to you. Let's see what they do. Are they just going to run out the clock or not? And they wanted more, didn't they? And it backfired. Well, I think Virginia will be on notice right now and look for that onside kick. Maybe they pooch kick this one. That's 14 points. I said last 90, take it inside 60. That's 14 points over the last 37 seconds. It'll be Farkas kicking it away. And Joe Reed thought about it, but it'll stay in the end zone. I think a different mindset now for Virginia on, on this possession to close out the half. Well, kick off NF week number two tomorrow. It all starts on ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern. We got the countdown crew, Rex, Charles, Matt, Randy, Moore, Jeffy, and Samantha. They'll have all the stories. Break it down for injury updates on every game right up to the kickoff. It's live. That's it. 10 a.m. and of course live on the ESPN app, so you can take it wherever you go. Now to start it with the takeaway with Perkins. Let's see if they keep it on the ground. No. Catch is made. Look out. Going out of bounds, and they're going to try to get some points. They got a couple of timeouts up there. So it is complete by Zacchaeus. And once again, a missed tackle on the outside. You've got to make those tackles because if you don't, there's nothing but open field. You cannot allow these ball carriers and receivers to get north and south. Get them down. Even if you don't make the tackle, get a hold of them and allow pursuit to get there. Make them cut back to the inside. First down of 21 yards, but the clock had to stop because he was out of bounds. Not this time, I don't think. Will he get to the sideline? No. Now it's the completions to Dubois, who's already got a touchdown reception. And they'll stop the clock on a second and short coming up at the, about the 46. And we've not seen the kicking game as a real factor here so far. Uh, but he has only tried one field goal over the first two weeks of the season. And he missed that. 
and that was a miss from 35 yards away. Well, Virginia has to be very careful right now. They're trying to pass the ball down the field, and this is when the defense becomes opportunistic. And you don't want to give up an easy turnover and allow Ohio to possibly put more points on the board or continue to build on the momentum that they've gotten with these last two scores. Right now, you've got a, a confident Ohio ball club that feels like in the second half, they can come out and make more plays like they have the last two drives to be back in this ball game. So for Virginia, you have to be very careful. If it's not wide open, if it's not what you want, I think Perkins should just get rid of the football. You get it coming back out in the second half. You don't want to give up another turnover. 33 seconds left in the half on a second and short. Room to run. That's Perkins. He's got the first down. We'll stop the clock with the movement of the chains. Down to the 38 near the 37. Another first down. You're well in field goal range for Mejia. And time is not a factor because Virginia has two timeouts left. Design roll right. Sideline works. Zacchaeus out of bounds for the first down. Stops it at the 28. Check that. Didn't get enough for the first down. He's short by a yard, but still stops it. And Virginia maybe should have looked at calling the timeout because the clock did start once they got the stick set for that first down. So they lost valuable seconds, maybe eight to nine seconds on that play. With 14 seconds left in the half. Little turn in route. Man, got to get down. Got a timeout. So it goes to Dubois once again. And I don't know if you want to gamble with one more throw even into the end zone. Timeout, Virginia. Second charge for the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. All right, you make the call, Mejia, or do you try to get one quick snap? Well, I think you go ahead and get the field goal. You don't take a chance. You've got a timeout, but plays can be long development. But Dubois took a shot on this play. Is there targeting? No, it's not targeting. He uh, led with his shoulder. He didn't launch himself. It looked like he launched himself, but when you watch the play uh, slow motion, I don't think you can consider that launching himself. And he didn't use his helmet. Exactly. As you said, he used his shoulder. Didn't use the crown of his helmet. I think Dubois was just wide open and left himself open to take a big hit. Probably just got the wind knocked out of him, but it's good to see him getting up. He's limping a little bit, but you're glad to see him getting up and being able to walk off the field. Let's see Dubois. He's had a really good first half with that reception. He's already got a touchdown. That's his fourth catch of the half for 47 yards. And Perkins, despite the fumble, can't complain. 18 of 40, 241 yards passing with a couple of touchdown tosses. So Mejia is coming onto the field. It's going to be a 32-yard attempt. And it's out of the hold of Nash Griffin, the sophomore from Indianapolis. Inside the upright, yes, he's got it. So a bit of a pick-me-up for the Cavaliers despite the, the two clock. quick There's scores. Two seconds left on the game clock. That's the first There's field goal seconds. of the new season for A.J. Mejia. Last year, 8 for 12, but not a great distance. Longest last year was 38 yards. So they're putting two seconds back on the clock. In a 17-point lead, we thought, you and I both thought, and we're kind of surprised when it went 35-7, we thought we were going to have a really good close game. And I still think we have the makings of a great ball game because of the confidence that Ohio has gained those last two drives. Very entertaining, and I like the no-quit attitude of this Ohio ball club. What you see from Frank Solis ball clubs, they don't quit. They continue to fight, and that's from the attitude of their head coach. Good call. A guy that has succeeded at the highest level and played at the highest level for Coach Devaney. 19 seasons as an assistant for Tom Osborne before he took over the Nebraska program. And going back there with the Osborne Legacy Award, he's going to be honored January 9th, a rare trip back to Nebraska. This should do it for the half, and it will. So a wild one that is the with a combined the half. 59 points on the board. But as you just mentioned, Boris, don't underest underestimate a solid squad.
So a good one going to Vanderbilt Stadium as we head back to the studio. As we get ready for the start of the second half with a matchup of Ohio, the Bobcats of Frank Solich taking on the Cavaliers of Virginia. Joel Myers along with former Florida State lineman Forrest Conley. And, and Forrest Willing at 20 possessions for the first half. What's wrong around here? Just 20. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Virginia's done a great job of passing the football. Perkins, 18 of 20. That's a 90% clip. He is just pitching and catching all over the field, and he hasn't had to run the football because of Ellis. Nine carries, 118 yards. This team is looking great offensively. Defensively, they've had some letdowns late in the half. They've got to pick it back up. I think they've got to get more pressure on Wart. Rourke has done a better job as the game has progressed at finding his receivers, going through his progressions and finding the open receiver. Farkas will kick it away. Joe Reed waiting back deep. Man, good kick by Farkas. Takes out the return game of Joe Reed, one of the best in the ACC. A look now at our Pacific Life game summary. And I mentioned Virginia dominated in the first part of this game. Took the ball away. First right away, a sack. Fumble recovery. Didn't take long, 18 yards on the run. So Ellis with the first score of the day, and then a broken tackle, and how about 86 yards? Zacchaeus going the distance, the senior from Philadelphia. And on the first snap of the second half, and let's see if they get the ground game going. We know the passing game has been there, and that's due to a couple of broken plays like we just saw, uh, but let's see if they do feature. Jordan Ellis, a little bit more of the ACC's running back of the week after their opener when he had 146 yards on the ground. Well, he is aiming to get the ACC running back of the week once again with that first half performance. And the thing that he's done a great job of is getting north and south, not going east and west. Something the coaching staff wanted him to concentrate on in this ball game. Ted Carey is now for Ellis, 144 yards. Or after Perkins, man, can he scramble? Gets away. And not much out of it and takes a lick at the end of the play, but still a plus two after all is said and done. Like to see him on the dance floor. Man. Well, you see the looseness of Perkins. He's able to break arm tackles. He's a big kid, a strong kid at 6'3, 210. And he's always falling forward. Don't you wish he had that flexibility at 6'3, 210? Come on. Third and a couple. Make it a long two, almost three. And the throw on time and on target. Joe Reed's got a first down. It's past the 40, up to the 41. But better pocket protection that time for Perkins. And Virginia went with the quick pass game. And once again, on third and short, the defenders are playing off the receivers. You're giving them too much space. You've got to get up on these receivers, bump them off the line of scrimmage, knock them off their path. Allow your pass rushes to get a little bit of pressure on Perkins. Now, there's not much behind Perkins, and he runs a lot. And I'm mentioning experience there behind Perkins in case he does go down and shoots that over the head of Zacchaeus. But uh, Lindelstone saw a little bit of time last year, not much. And then they got Armstrong, uh, Brennan Armstrong, the true freshman from Shelby, Ohio, some snaps in the opener against Richmond. But when you, like Bronco Mendenhall, you run an offense like this, you've got to worry when you don't have depth at quarterback. Well, that's why you've got to have a quarterback that understands the importance of getting down when you need to, not taking unnecessary hits, and getting the ball to your ball carriers. That's only his third incompletion. Perkins now 19 of 22 after the miss. Take the jet. Ellis on second and 10. Maybe three up to the 44. So two minutes gone by in the third. And all of a sudden, having the roles changed a little bit, we thought it was going to be Ohio trying to play keep away and run the football. Virginia with a 17-point cushion. If anything, they want to chew up some clock now. Well, Bert, Kent Bergman and Andrew Payne are doing a better job in the middle of that defense of being stout at the point of attack and not allowing the center and the guards to push them up the field. That'll be third and long. Got Peacock one of the few times for the backfield. Send in that direction, but for the wide receiver losing the football, and they're going to call it an incompletion. So they got it out. The grab was temporary for Terrell Jano. 
And they did a good job on the tackle in twist. You see the tackle lined up to the outside. He gets pressure on Perkins, but he delivers a strike. And that looks to me like they need to review that play. That looks like a catch and a fumble. He gets the football, brings it to his body, and then the defender, Crouch, makes contact, and the ball comes out. It was recovered by Ogun Seymour for the defensive end. But it doesn't look like there's going to be a review. Only the second punt of the game for Virginia. Coming over to pick it up, running out of bounds for the Bobcats, Poppy White. So let's see if they take and put a scare early in the second half and take this and move the football effectively. Well, I think if you're Ohio, you continue to do what you did late in the second quarter. You allow Rourke to be your quarterback and go down the field. He showed an ability to go through his progressions. He showed an ability to find the matchup that was good for Ohio, not for Virginia. And he put the ball where his receivers, only his receivers, can make a play on it. 11 possessions in the first half for the Bobcats. Two tight end set. And they run or fake the option. Underneath, coming back, it's complete. So a catch for Andrew Meyer. And a good decision and that's by his Rourke. First. Well, that was a good decision by Rourke again. He wanted to go to Poppy White down the field, but he was double covered. You see him look, and he went through his progressions, and he found the open receiver, Meyer, in the middle of the defense. So Meyer's first grab goes for 12, and a first down to the 32, a guy that had 35 catches last year, a three-year starter. Now going deep in single coverage. White's there. He's got it. Poppy White on the grab. And every time he gets Poppy White with man coverage on the outside, he goes to him. Tim Harris had good coverage on that play, but Rourke put the ball where only White could make a play on it. You saw him get the knee down inbounds. Great catch by White. He times it, doesn't he? So Harris looked like he had great coverage on it, but it's the better time, you know, Poppy White to go up and take it away. But I mean, there was nothing else Harris could do on that play. He was where he needed to be. The ball was just where only White could make a play on it. 37 yards down to the 31. Middle of the field's available. Got it. First and goal inside the five. Grab is made by Elijah Ball. He had one catch in the first half. Big one to start the second half, but unfortunately, he's still down. Well, they've been going with zero coverage, and Rourke saw it. He read the defense and put it right over the safety's outstretched arms to hit his receiver going down the seam. That is what you have to do when the defense shows you what they're going to do in your pre-snap reads. You go where there's no defenders. They're going to take a look at the young man who hopefully will have good news on when we come back in a really good one at Vandy. Cats of Ohio, the redshirt junior from Cincinnati. And, and did he just get his bell rung a little bit when he hit the ground? Maybe that was the case. Because they took him back to the locker room for further evaluation. But great to see him on his own. And how about the pass plays? On this drive along, alone, plays him 12, 28, and 37 yards to set it up first and goal for young Nathan R Rourke. Well, Rourke has got that confidence going. He knows where he wants to go with the football. He's looking off the defenders, and he's finding the right matchups. Irons a single on a first and goal at the three. And on a play fake, rare throw to the tight end. Nothing doing for Ryan Lorman, sophomore from Athens, Ohio. An identical twin, no less. They've got two sets of identical twins on the Bobcats. So if they want to play some games with the coaching staff, Good luck, guys. <laughs> because they got the Motleys in the secondary, and they're identical twins. Nothing doing on that play, though. Now, this is where I like to see old school football. Line up in the I formation with a fullback, a lead blocker, and go downhill. Give your offensive lineman an opportunity to be offensive lineman. There is nothing dainty about you, Forrest. It is second and goal to the three. It's Malik Irons. He's got a score from that neighborhood. He's put down at the one, a third and goal. Touchdown here. We got a game, 10-point game. Well, if I'm Coach Solis, I've already alerted my offense to this being four-down territory. 
you're inside the five yard line. You've got a huge offensive line. I love the left guard, Joe Anderson, number 63. I'd like to see them run behind him these next two plays because the one thing about that big fella, when he gets going, he's able to run through defenders. He keeps his feet turning, and he plays with a low center of gravity. Let's see if they go over to that side. That's the jumbo look on that side with the H-back. Experience on that side. Up the middle, and he's in. Touchdown, Malik Irons and Ohio. Bobcats with three touchdowns on their last three possessions. And you saw the big fella number 63 clean out everything on the inside. You see him take number 93 and knock him back into the end zone, allowing the back irons to get over the top for the touchdown. Great job by the offensive line for Ohio. That's pretty impressive. Out of the locker room, six plays, 80 yards. And now Zerbos with a big extra point. The junior from Tarpon Springs, Florida, He's got it. So at one point down 28, 35 to 7. With the lunge by Irons, it's a 10-point deficit. They played four in Baton Rouge at LSU's Tiger Stadium, and that's what we've got today. It wasn't planned, but it's been a good one. And we're at Vanderbilt Stadium, the west end of Nashville. And what a city this has turned out to be. Great downtown area. And these three have only accounted, and they need more from these three because 10 point game 527 yards for Perkins Ellison Zacchaeus Joe Reed goes back but Farkas has kicked it off so well that he has been taken out of the equation and that is going to be the case once again as we head back to the studio what's the latest Chris BYU shocks Wisconsin inside Camp Randall thank you Chris it's totally turned around here that went for a touchdown that's a good scramble up the middle hard running up the middle once again and that's been the story for Ellis from the first snap of the game so a guy that they just mentioned Camp Randall in Wisconsin Rocco Mendenhall get a few big wins at BYU didn't he just a few second and a couple Ellis dancing won't make the marker he still needs a yard, yard and a half. Good gang tackling. And it should not be understated the job that Berger and Payne and the rest of those defenders are doing now in the middle of that defense. Ellis got the big run on first down. But once again, these guys have tightened up. They're using their arms. They're using their arm length. They're getting separation from these offensive linemen and pushing them back. Last eight minutes of the game. Ohio's outscored him 21 to 3. How big is this? They're 5 of 7 on third downs. Need a little more than a yard. Man, get it. It's Jordan Ellis. Not a bad idea to go to the running back. It's 5'10, 225, and he went low and got it. You can see the offensive lineman able to get up to the second level defenders, get blocks, give Ellis the room that he needed to get the first down. But there's nothing more than the first down available for Ellis. Ellis is up to 141 yards with this much time left in the game on 14 carries. Play fake. Perkins makes a miss again. And is there a hold on the outside? Tight end. Was all locked up, wasn't he? That was Butts supplying the block. But Perkins does a good job to well, get outside. He's such an elusive player when he gets to the outside. The defenders have got to do a better job. You've got to make that tackle. You can't let him get north and south. As long as he's east and west, you're doing your job because you're allowing pursuit to get there. But once he plants that foot and gets north and south, he's getting positive yards. Weak side backer, Evan Crouch, senior from Youngstown, was saying, wait a minute. Couldn't get away there. First down from the 47. Perkins, can he get away? No. And what a job in the backfield. Bobcats big time play from Will Evans. And the best pass rusher for Ohio is able to get up the field and get around Perkins that you see him break away. He's able to engage and disengage once he sees Perkins trying to get to the outside. Glad it wasn't the tearaway. He slides down the body and he got him by the ankle. And it's one of the few times they've been able to get Perkins for a loss. So he's working out of an empty backfield after the loss of about six. 
Movement. Ball start. Ball start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. Right guard, Jake Fielder. And that's the one thing offensive co offensive line coaches hate the most. You know the snap count. Don't respond or react to the defender. You make them respond and react to you. Well, what a shift in momentum in this game. And all of a sudden now, it is second and forever. And so, for Ohio, keep everything in front of them right now. You can't allow an offensive player to get behind you. Need 22 for the first down. Can they get about 10 or 12 back? Perkins going down again. Guess who? Evans. So our forces them in. Evans cleans up outside. Well, Ohio's getting pressure with four. They're dropping seven back into coverage. You see right here, they've got four coming. They're getting pressure. And when you're able to get four and leave seven back, Perkins has nowhere to go with the football. It seems Virginia has abandoned that option-style offense and tried to go to a more traditional offense, and it's hurt them. So now third. They're better than 30. Middle of the field. Zacchaeus gets it, but well short of the first down. So Bobcats hold once again. And it's going to be back-to-back -back punts to start the second half for Virginia. And momentum has continued to shift to this Ohio ball club sideline. They are confident that they can move the ball on this Virginia defense. And now the defense has gotten comfortable with their ability to stop the Virginia offense. Yeah, they had a little momentum going into the locker room. We mentioned that. And it's carried over to the second half. Coleman gets into it. Fair catch for Poppy White, and he's got it outside of the 20. So only a 10-point deficit, and the Bobcats get the ball back. And Rourke goes down the field to his big play receiver, Poppy White, and then the onside kick is almost like a tennis player serving a body shot, and the guy just ducking down. And once again, Rourke getting the ball down the field where only his receiver can make a play on it. He's done a good job of finding the right matchup. 10-point game. Man, the Bobcats have forced back-to-back -back punts on the first two possessions of the second half out of Virginia. And Virginia had it nine times and only had two punts out of those nine of the first half. So it has drastically changed. Handoff works. That's Olet. Good yardage on first down. Hammering over the left side for about six. And because they've been able to pass the ball effectively, it starts to open up those running lanes for their running backs to get up the field. Olet. Their leading ball carrier. Man has not really had that many touches today. Scrambles, breaks tackles, and he's got a first down. So maybe they get the guy some more touches because he did not have many. He only had six in the first half. Irons had nine, but Olette is their starter. Well, one of the things the Ohio offensive linemen do a great job of is tandem blocking. Their guards and their centers, or excuse me, their center double team, and then the guards are able to climb up to the second level and cover up those linebackers. Good news for Ohio. See Elijah Ball coming out of the locker room, the wide receiver that went down. It'll be first and 10 at the 34. Path over to the right side, shut down in a hurry. Gain of about three. That was Zandier who came over. And he's made some plays. The sophomore from Pittsburgh is getting the start. So the Bobcats trying to pull off the upset. It is closer, as we mentioned at the very top of the telecast almost three hours ago. Frank Solich's squad, and they bust down the 400-plus miles. About 420. It's about 550 from Charlottesville. It'll be second and seven. Empty on the outside. Going away from the blitz, but great play. Down around the ankles. 
stop is made by Chris Peets. Otherwise, there's some yards to be had there. Monday Night Football, good matchup. Russell Wilson of the Seahawks in Chicago going up against the newest pair, Khalil Mack and Chicago. Monday Night Countdown, it all begins at 6 o'clock, served by Applebee's. Kickoff, 815 Eastern on ESPN. Simulcast on ESPN2 as well in Spanish and on the ESPN app. Big third down. Momentum has certainly shifted. Can Ohio keep the ball? Long count by Rourke on the option. They'll keep it. Irons gets it, breaks the tackle. He's into the secondary. What a time for that call. And Irons showed you some of the intangibles that you need at the running back position. Elusiveness, fearlessness, and an ability to get north and south. You see him get north and south, and he's able to elude the defender and get those positive yards. And Rourke held onto the ball till the last minute. And you see Irons going inside and outside those defenders. Great job by this Ohio coaching staff to call that play and get the first down. That left tackle at 6 7, 3 10. Joe Lowry, second team all back last year. Forrest, he got out there. Did a good job creating that path. And so. it's an interesting thing about Joe Lowry, he's a ma he's a nursing major. Yeah. So I guarantee you he won't have problems. <laughs> First and ten for the 47. A little bunch on the wide side, bottom of your screen. Flair in the flat. Irons. Decent yardage. About four as we head back to Chris in the studio. What's the last the power from the quarterback to get into the end zone 44 21 the Pokes with the victory they're partying right now as we speak Chris at Eskimo Joe's come on in Stillwater 10 point game second and long Blake coming from the sideline as they get up to the line iron stays in the backfield wide size another pitch it is Irons. He just plows into it. He plows into his own man as well as big tackle. Pleasance over to the right side. Short of the first down by three. And I like what Rourke is doing. He's forcing the defender to make a decision. And once the defender makes the decision, then he decides what he's going to do with the football. If the defender comes to him, he's going to pitch it. If the defender goes out with the pitch man, he's able to keep it and get up the field. So far, the defender has continued to come towards him, and he's made the pitch right at the right moment to allow his back to be up going north and south up the field. Need three. Four of nine on their third down conversion. This is huge in a 10-point game. Now the first down, they're in field goal territory. Blitz on the outside. That side available, but he overshoots. Lorman, the tight end. Injury timeout. Unfortunately, one of the Cavaliers is down over on the near side as well. So a couple of first downs, but they stall. And it looks like Joey Blunt, but we'll wait and see. And I would not be shocked if Ohio went for this because of the way their defense has played well in the second half and stopped this Virginia offense. Not a bad thought. They have the momentum. It looked like Blunt just kind of pulled up and lame. It didn't look like anyone hit him. Yeah, that's the worst, the non-contact. They take a timeout, so will we, and we'll see if Ohio goes for it on fourth down. Half more from Atlanta, Joey Blunt. Holding the small of his back, maybe an awkward landing. How did they get him? Well, he jumped up in the air, went airborne, and he got hit right in the side, and he was exposed a little bit, so it may have just knocked the wind out of him. He looks to be okay right now on the sideline. And like I said, you're just happy to see a guy get up because it didn't look good at first. All right, if they go for it, all right, and you see him holding that side. He was so vulnerable, leaving his feet like that. Are they? Yep. Coming back out. And I like this. The way the defense is played in the second half, why not? You're here to win the ball game. Yeah, the defense is firing. The defense coming up with sacks all of a sudden. So they need to get it down to the 37. And let's see if they do. Will they see if they can get him to jump? 
Olette, not Irons in the backfield. Need three, middle of the field, batted away. What timing by Bryce Hall. That is the end of the third quarter. High back. He was going for Cameron Odom. Haven't looked in his direction too often today. Hall comes through in the clutch. What a way to finish the third. A 10-point game after the Bobcats were down by 27. Should be a wild final 15 minutes as we continue. It's the ACC on ESPN, and we welcome you back to the campus of Vanderbilt University. Joel Myers, Forrest Conley, our Pacific Life game summary. Only points for us at the second half along with the Bobcats. Well, you've got a confident Bobcat ball club. They've come out. They've set the tone defensively. Offensively, they've moved the football. They didn't get that first down, but they feel confident about their ability to move the ball down the field. Let's see if Virginia can get back on task with this offense, get the ball down the field. We haven't seen Perkins passing the ball as effectively as he did early in this ball game. The young man started his career as he rolls over to the right side at Arizona State, a perfect strike. He went to Dubois, who's got it, and he's got a first down across the midfield stripe. So they take over to start the fourth with great field position after the failure on fourth down. And it's a great throw by Perkins to the sideline, to Dubois, allowing him to get the ball and get out of bounds. Good job by not trying to do too much. Fifth catch for Dubois. Got a touchdown. Zacchaeus also with a touchdown. Eight catches. His game early. The run the tight end in motion. Crack back clock. And design run for Perkins. Little almost like a counter action on that play as we head back to Chris Cotter. What's going on, Chris? All right, gentlemen. Wisconsin lost at home on a missed field goal. Auburn loses at home on one that was made. Cole Tracy from 42 yards out. LSU goes into Jordan Hare and knocks Auburn from the ranks of the unbeaten. I feel better already. I'm a New Orleanian, you know that. <laughs> so feeling good for my friends, all my LSU Tiger friends. Second and a yard or two. That is huge. That's such a tough place to win. Perkins, almost like he wanted the quarterback draw. Throws it back to the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. Boy, is that a strong arm. Well, that's is why there a flag? Yes. Well, that's why they're spinning Perkins outside the pocket because Ohio's been able to get pressure on him. They've got to get him outside the pocket to allow him to have time. Ogun Seymour, just a redshirt freshman, Dacula, Georgia. And the illegal downfield. Or didn't it make it to the line of scrimmage? I thought I got back to the marker. Well, let's see if he's outside the tackle box as well. He's outside the tackle box, but the ball didn't get past the line of scrimmage. Ineligible downfield, five-yard penalty, second down. And we were both wrong on that. Right. <laughs> so what are the big guys in scramble mode? And so often, that's the tough one because you're running a quarterback who likes to run, and you run and run pass options frequently, and it's his all option, his alternative. You don't know. Well, the quarterback can see what's going on with the offensive line. So if he sees his lineman down the field, then he has to make that decision to run the football or risk getting that penalty. But the one thing that Ohio's continued to do is get pressure on the quarterback and not allow him to set his feet and throw the ball down the field. Got close. Didn't get all the way there. And now the little flip of the flat. Joe Reed, big playmaker. He's got a first down inside the 35. You always wonder about how can you get him, whether it's jet sweeps or a little dump offs in the flat like that in motion. Well, you talk about a game of inches. Watch the defensive end on this play. He almost gets a hand on the football right there. A couple of inches, and he knocks that ball down some more. So Joe Reed, who led the ACC in kick return average last year. Finally. Getting involved. They're not going to hurry. About two minutes gone in the fourth. Wide open. It's Dubois, and he's got another first down as we head back to Chris Scott. Or Chris. 
Plenty of scoring in this Alabama Ole Miss game already. First off, Ole Miss. Jordan Tamu is going to find DK Metcalf. Look at him get behind the defense. Great catch. Keeps his feet. Does he get in? Yes, he does. It was reviewed. He scores. Now, Alabama just scored on a Damian Harris run. 7-6, to six, Ole Miss on ESPN. First down, Virginia. Trying to find some breathing room up by 10. And Jordan Ellis. Good carry over to the left side for about five. He's been their workaholic today. The leading rusher on both sides. 15 carries, 145 yards. And doesn't hurt to have three touchdowns. So he's been the catalyst offensively along with Zacchaeus. Bend, not break. If they can bend and not break and only give up a field goal or a field goal attempt, they still have a chance to possibly win this game by a point with two touchdowns. That's a penalty in the end zone. There was a flag, and it looked like there was a jump on the line of scrimmage as well, and it could have been offside. We'll see. But the defensive back, Jalen Fox, says he was grabbed. And he was definitely grabbed on that play. Little shove. There's two fouls on the play, one on each team. Offensive pass interference, number eight on the offense. Defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Defense, fouls offset, second down. And I'll tell you what was good for Fox to make a play because that was a free play for Virginia. And if he doesn't make an attempt to knock that ball down, you don't get that penalty call and you give Virginia an extra five yards. Jump underneath, as you can see, the tackle. So they reset Time it. Out. Virginia. And now First Virginia, three minutes into the fourth, they're going to talk it over. Huge possession for the Cavaliers, leading by 10. Tonight. Ohio State and TCU. Couple in the top 15, 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Well, what a day for Bryce Perkins throwing the ball for Bronco Mendenhall. And I bring that up because he had a combined 291 yards passing over the first two games. He's got 297 today. And that's after the first couple of games, and he hasn't really carried the ball all that much today. Sacks take away, of course, but 123 yards rushing first game, second game, 108. So there's better balance overall. Others are involved in the ground game. They were looking for that. And 38 points on the board. Bouncing around, can he get away? No. Jordan Ellis with good penetration by Ohio in the backfield once again. And as you said, Forrest, that's why they went for it on fourth down because the D has been really solid in the second half. And once again for Ohio, if they can hold them to a field goal, they're still only two scores down. If they if they allow Virginia to score a touchdown, now you're three scores down. But that defensive line has done a great job on the interior the second half of this ball game being stout at the point of attack. Six of nine on the third downs as the Cavaliers try to make it seven of ten. Middle, can he get there? No. Great job defensively. That butts the tight end and held up big time by the free safety Hagan. And I like what Hagan did on that play. He wasn't looking for the big hit. He held on to the receiver, dragging him down allowing pursuit to get there his other co his other uh, defenders to get there to get him down you want to prevent him from getting the first down that's all your job is prevent him from getting that first down Bahia it'll be a 30 yard attempt to go up by 13 and it's off the upright it stays at 10. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a win to, to hold him to a field goal, but now it's a big time win. <laughs> the Bobcats get it back, still alive and well. It's the ACC on ESPN as we continue late in the fourth.
at Vanderbilt. And we remind you, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is a week-long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Yard for Teachers platform. And Gino Camaletti, one of Nathan Rourke's, the quarterback for Ohio, one of Nathan's former physical education teachers, head football coach, Holy Trinity Secondary School in Oakville, Ontario. And Gino fought the cancer first time. Gino is fighting cancer once again. And Gino, we are thinking of you right now. So our thoughts are with you. And, and the job that you have done, and Nathan Rourke is a great example of it. Terry Olette going backwards for the last three or four, but a good first down across the 27, almost eight on the carry. And going over the left side, and Forrest, that's where Joe Lowry and Joe Anderson are, their experience on that side. Well, you've got 40 career starts between the two of them, and back to uh, a thought that we had earlier about Lowry, you know, being a nursing major, you, you often find patients not listening to what the nurse tells them to do. I'm sure when Mr. Lowry walks in the room at 6'7", 310 pounds, they'll <laughs> listen to what he has to say as far as taking their meds. Right. Yeah, really? You're not going to? as he towers over them. <laughs> and he was second team all back last year, so this is a very successful young man in life as well. Senior from Talmadge, Ohio. And trying to provide another foot or two because it's going to be third and about maybe a foot or two to convert with 9.40 to play in a 10-point game. You joined us late. At one point, it was a 28-point deficit for the Bobcats, but they all turned it around late in the first half and to carry it over to the second half. And once again, I've run behind my bell cow, number 63, the left guard, Joe Anderson. He's been getting movement all afternoon. Need a yard, less than a yard, get it. Oh, that little counteraction that time. Whatever it takes. 110, 120, they get it to the 32. And watch the right side of this offensive line. They push everything to the inside, allowing o Olet to get to the outside and get enough yards to get the first down. They're getting a good push at the point of attack so far with this offensive line. They're winning the battle in the trenches. Now 5 of 11 on third downs with that conversion. And they make it interesting for all of us. And too close for the Cavaliers. Nothing at all. Maybe a loss of a yard. The ball's, is it out? No. Rolling on the field, the runner was down. Second down. Thornhill came up on the run support. That was a hard hit. And you have to wonder, was he was his knee down? And was that a premature whistle? Because Olette said he wasn't down. Let's see on this play. Let's see. No, the knee wasn't unless, well. I don't know if you could tell he, right there. He didn't it did look not like, look like he was no, down. That whistle may have been a quick one. He still looked like he was on the body of the tackler. Now, maybe an elbow was down, but from that angle, it did not look like he was down. Delay game. Can't afford it, especially when you're Delay trailing. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. One thing of the clock is stopped, but the clock was rolling with 7.48 to play. And you're already behind the sticks on second down. Costly penalty for this offense. Now you're forcing Ohio and Rourke to pass the football. They've been successful, but it's predictable now that they're going to possibly or very likely pass the football. Let's see what Virginia does as far as a pass rush. Been a pretty clean game for us this early in the season. That's only the fourth penalty on Ohio. Just three on Virginia. Second and 16. Got some space, but it's behind. Intended target, Bobby White. And that's a difficult throw because he was trying to throw his receiver open as opposed to an injury timeout. You got to throw it right now. You can't wait. He waited for White to turn up the field. I thought he should have threw it to him when he was on that out pattern and allowed White to get it and then turn up the field because he's got one on one on the outside. Unfortunately, one of the linemen down for Ohio. So with the timeout, we'll come right back to Vandy with seven. To Vanderbilt campus, the west end of downtown Nashville, at a third and long, and work at 16, 17 yards. They bring the extra pass rusher, they pick it up, turning around, out of bounds, even if he makes the catch. Trying to find 
Hooks, the wide receiver. With seven minutes and 11 seconds. Four down linemen. Yeah, Peacock had room if he hangs on to the football. That's Jamari Peacock, a sophomore fullback. That young man's out of the same high school in Uly, Florida, as the 2015 Heisman Trophy winner, Derrick Henry. Huge third down. Plenty of time, comeback trail. Zacchaeus gets it, and a lot more. Look out, going down the sideline, like we saw earlier. Zacchaeus with a long touchdown. And you can't allow that to happen. You've got three defenders around Zacchaeus. The one thing that Zacchaeus did on this play that you don't see a lot of young receivers doing is he went back to the football. He didn't wait for it to get to him. You see him go back to the ball, and once he's able to turn up the field, if we even am leaving, he's down the sideline. The Ohio defenders cannot catch him. He gets to the end zone. Well, Zacchaeus had an 86-yard score in the first quarter on the second series of the game. Now it's a 77-yarder. And that should ice it at 45 to 28. 601 to play. That's nine catches. And career best 247 for the senior from Philadelphia. Axon Mobile. Man, Ohio University now trailing by 17 once again to the Cavaliers of Virginia. Joel Myers along with former Florida State lineman Forrest Conley. Man, a lot of records being set today. 247 yards receiving. That is a new Cavalier record and well-deserved for Zacchaeus. Bryce Perkins is going to be pretty tough to top what he's done today as well. Bryce Perkins, 25 of 30, as it's going to be brought back by Ross across the 20 and out of bounds just shy of the 30. But this is a record-setting day for a number of Cavaliers. 379 yards passing, three touchdowns. Zacchaeus, 247 of the receiving end of nine. And, and let's not forget about the running game that was set up as well. Jordan Ellis, 16 carries, 145 yards, nine yard average. Well, we come into the ball game talking about Bryce Perkins and, and his ability to run the football effectively. Over 100 yards in two uh, in consecutive ball games, something that hadn't been done at Virginia since 1941. So if you're Ohio, you coming in with the idea, we've got to stop Perkins from running the football, but he passes it all over the field on you. So what do you do? <laughs> He's just had a great ball game, and he's shown his versatility as well as being a great runner, a great passer. And he got others involved. We'll get back to that after the first down from the 30. Rourke has gone the distance and just over top of his intended target. He was going for Cameron Odom, the sophomore from Bedford, Ohio. But we had mentioned at the very top of the telecast for us that there were 39 carries for the Cavaliers last week. And granted, it was raining and there was some ad living that had to be done. But 25 of the carries belonged to the quarterback. And, and you know how it is. Running backs, where's mine? Well, now for teams getting ready to face Virginia, they have to be concerned not only with Perkins running the football, but throwing the football. You can't just prepare for one thing when you face this quarterback now. And it gives him more confidence as a passer in this offense. Rourke going deep. And on a jump ball, out of bounds, unfortunately, on a good grab by Andrew Meyer. So he's all tangled up. Coverage applied was very good by Bryce Hall as well. And I love the never quit attitude by this ball club. And a great attempt to catch the football and a good job by the defender to force him out of bounds, not allowing him to come down with two feet or one foot in bounds. Good job by Bryce Hall, forcing the receiver out. So are they going to dominate? Well, what it boils down to are the Cavaliers going to dominate now ACC Players of the Week. They put up some gaudy numbers. Third and 10 from the 30. Tried to run before he had it, didn't he? Bad break for the wide receiver hooks. He's getting some reps late in this game with 534 to play. And that's an interesting question, Joel. When you look at back of the week, you know, when you look at uh, oh, excuse me, offensive player of the week, Perkins and Zacchaeus, who do you pick? <laughs> because uh, 
Zacchaeus can do what he did without Perkins getting the ball to him, but Perkins couldn't have the numbers that he had without getting the ball to Zacchaeus. Kelly waits for the punt from Farkas. Hangs up a beauty. Call for it. He will. He got to lay it out. He puts the ball on the ground. Ohio's got it. Bobcats get it back at the 40. And there was no need to try and catch that football. Now there's a flag on the far side. Over to the far side of the 50. Let's see what that's all about. But you've got to be smarter. There's no need to try and make that catch. Just allow the ball to drop. When you see it's going to be difficult, just let it go. Holding. Receiving team number 42. Penalties declined since the results of the play is a recovery by Ohio. First down. So third turnover of the game, but and we also remember that Tavares Kelly is a true freshman. He's right out of a great high school program. St. Thomas Aquinas in for Lauderdale. Well, he's a young player trying to make a play at the end of a ball game where he knows they're going to win. But you have to be smart and understand that you'll be in a similar, maybe in a similar situation in a closer ball game. You can't make those errors. They get it at the Cavaliers 40. Four man rush. Here comes the Heat. Got it away in time. Oh, let's got it. And he's short of the first down after a game of nine. Good open field tackle. So the backer and, and Zane Zandier, who got the start today uh, due to an injury, Zane Zandier is going to show up a lot when they look at that film. It'll be second and less than a yard. Low throw and a trap. And no, he's going to say he got it. Poppy White. What a scoop. And a great job on the blitz pickup by A.J. Olette to allow Rourke the time that he needed to pass the ball. Now, let's see if White's able to get his hands. Whoa. Great catch. That's serious. That is a great catch. Odom's got it. Another stop route on the sideline. Short of the first down, but that poppy white catch. Well, he gets his hands under the football, he squeezes it, and he keeps it off the ground. Good call by the official, because it looked like we're way up high. We're a few stories off. All 22, that's what we're looking at today. But that was a great catch by Poppy White. Here's the blitz off the edge. Rourke sensed it. And out of bounds, even if it's picked, which it wasn't by Bryce Hall, who's had a sensational game. 351 to play and a third down coming in four down territory when you're down by 17. The sports center tonight, Stan Neal, right after college football. Kirk Herbstreit, he's going to break things down for the Ohio State TCU game for the guys and the potential implications for the postseason as well. All the best moments from college football and the reactions from Stephen A. Smith, Teddy Atlas following the big fight with Canelo and Triple G, that sports center, 1 a.m. Good fight coming up. 907 yards of total offense. Just a humdrum day at the yard. 533 for Virginia. 374 so far for the Bobcats. Rourke in trouble. Good night. Zandier. I mentioned he might show up a little bit. He has all day. Well, Virginia bought the house in that play. There was nowhere for Roark to go with the football because he had pressure in his face right at the snap. He tries to get outside the pocket, but they did a good job of containing him, keeping him inside the pocket, and running him back into a defender, and Zandier is there to make the play. Sophomore from Pittsburgh. He's going to celebrate later at Primanti Brothers. So it's going to be a field goal try, down by 17. And then, with so little time left, 310 and counting. We already saw one onside kick that was effective. Zervos, it'll be a 45 yard attempt, and it's good for 55. That's good to know for down the road purposes for Frank Solich. Not a lot of wind out there today. Believe me, real sticky day. Not a lot of wind in Nashville. So it's back to a two score game. 
Yeah, at 45 31 you've seen stranger things come on now <laughs> and i'm glad you're smiling again because the first half of the game you said it all you were still suffering you're just, you're you were still you're suffering gonna, you're going to continue to remind me of that <laughs> <laughs> so around the acc we have the cancellation of central florida and north carolina also east carolina virginia tech and how about Boston College over Wake? What a game. 41-34. Miami taking care of Toledo. Syracuse, the big surprise. Really a surprise. And I only say that because of the score. Not that they can't win at home over Florida State, because Florida State has sputtered offensively earlier this year. Well, they did it with a backup quarterback, and I think that's what's a little bit more surprising. Dungey. We know how well Dungey's played in that offense, but they did it with a backup quarterback. Onside kick covered by the Cavaliers with a flag down. All right, so we get ready now. And what a game and what momentum. Now you got to tighten things up defensively, uh, but the Cavaliers have Louisville next week. Offside. Offside by the kicking team, number three. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play, first down. Well, the thing that I look for them to work on and shore up is the middle of that offensive line. Uh, they've got to do a better job of blocking and not allowing pressure to come into Perkins' face. Too often, Ohio's been able to get pressure right in his face. There's nowhere for him to step up into the pocket. And when he tries to scramble to the outside, their defensive ends have been able to close in on him and get him down to the ground. Look out. There goes Jordan Nelson, or Jordan Ellis and he's got a first down popped out of bounds at about the 25 now the one thing they don't have to work on is Jordan Ellis breaking tackles because <laughs> he's done that all throughout this afternoon we had 146 a couple of weeks ago 160 today that's hanging the free safety it's late so the clock continues to roll We've not seen this formation all that often. And we thought we'd see a little bit more of that triple threat look. Jordan Ellis again. But we did think that we were going to see the trips in the backfield, didn't we? Well, they showed it early. But not I think they had so much success running dive plays with Ellis right. that they just got away from it. Because remember the first couple of plays, he just took it to the house. And when you've got something that's working, you don't try and fix it. <laughs> no, and you're right to that point because it was 14-7. On a first snap of the 25, he took it 75 straight up the gut between the center and guard. So it was easy that they didn't have to clutter things in the backfield. And I think what you saw early from Ohio is overthinking the play because of that triple option and what they're able to do out of it with the different formations and all the moving parts. Dallas, what a tough running back. He's got a first down. That'll do it inside the 15 to the 14 to close it out so they can take a couple of more snaps and it's over and once again you see Ellis put his head down and keep those feet churning he's churning 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 he's not going to go down until you take him down he's not just going to fall down well and what about his balance I mean he's going through he starts and all of a sudden he's going sideways well for a back you look for three intangibles balance toughness and quickness and he's got all of those intangibles, and you've seen it throughout this afternoon. So he had only two that carry the football today. Ellis and Perkins take a knee. One more. It'll be over. We remind you, get the ESPN app right now with ESPN+. Plus. You'll get more ESPN when you download it. So download it right now. It's been a totally entertaining game. And especially give credit to these Bobcats because they were down to 35-7 and we thought well boy it's going to be a blowout they got that score at the end of the half they went on a 21-3 run and they made a great game of it well I've not only been impressed with these ball clubs to travel down here to a neutral site and play a great ball game but to the fan bases for both ball clubs Virginia has a lot of fans here Ohio has a lot of fans here and once again we want to continue to send our prayers out to some of the families 
in, uh, excuse me, to all of the families in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia that have been affected by Hurricane Florence. But a great turnout by the fan base and a great ball game by both teams. Two good programs. We just saw for us Frank Zoldich getting together with Bronco Mendenhall. These are two guys that have done it at the highest level for a long time. They've done a good job, and you see the potential for both of these ball clubs. You know, Rourke did not have a great first ball game. Maxwell came in and helped them get the win. But you see why they started Rourke again. He threw the ball effectively. He went through his progressions. He found the open receiver. He found the matchups. And the, the story of Perkins, man, right. it that's, is yet to be written. That's this guy's super. Now I'm glad you brought it up because isn't that the best part of it all for Virginia? The, the flexibility and the escapability, the way he keeps plays alive? Well, you know he can keep plays alive. You know he can score running the football. And now we know he has the potential to pass for 300 yards at any given time. And Ellis at running back, they've got a, a, a three-headed monster with Zacchaeus, Ellis, and Perkins. Really entertaining one. And thank you for joining us on ESPN. For Forrest Conley, I'm Joel Myers and our entire ESPN crew as the ACC prevailed over the Mid-American Conference. Our final score at Vanderbilt University, Virginia 45, Ohio 31. So long, everybody. Stay with us all night long. More college football on ESPN.